Welcome back to Affordable Friday. Today I'm going to be sharing the number one product in every category at the drugstore, updated for 2023. Also, I haven't been doing Affordable Friday as much lately, but I'm trying to get back into doing it very consistently. And as of right now, every Friday for the rest of the month of June, I have an, a drugstore video scheduled on my calendar. So I'm very excited about that. Let's start off in the base category with the number one primer at the drugstore in my opinion okay it is a predictable answer but i do think this is worth the hype this is the elf power grip primer and this is one as we're getting into summer this is one of the best primers for locking your makeup in like it doesn't get better than this i also really do love the hard candy sheer envy hydrating primer i find that to be similar to this but with less gripping ability this i find so much more effective at keeping my makeup on throughout the day. So if longevity is your main concern, this is the one. Also though, it does hydrate a little bit. Like, I don't know, it's literally sticky. Like you guys have probably seen their Super Bowl ad with Jennifer Coolidge where like everything is sticking to her. When you apply this, genuinely your face will be sticky. Like if you apply it, okay, here's the tip. If you're using any gripping primer, you kind of want to apply it and then just do a little bit of this. That I like to say activates the stickiness. And I am not kidding, I have actually tried it before, taken like an eyeliner or something and it will stick to your face. Foundation. This one was tough. I, I do feel like a lot of my foundation favorites recently have been high end, but one that I always love and always recommend and is not new, but I think is the best, is the foundation from Koki, the HD from foundation. <laughs> HD foundation. I have used mine up, so I don't have it at the moment, but it's such a beautiful formulation. It's a little bit harder to get your hands on because not all drugstores carry this, and it's also not at Ulta. I would love to see Ulta get Koki. I think that would be really cool, but I do have an affiliate code with them. If you're shopping on their website, it's Kelly25. It will get you 25% off. Otherwise, I've seen this in Rite Aid. I've seen Koki in Sally's Beauty, but never the foundation, but this one... It is like the most in the middle formulation. And that's why it's one I recommend so often because it's not too dewy, but it's not too matte. It's not too full coverage, but it's not too light coverage. It's very skin-like, it's smoothing, it's long wearing. It's everything I want. Concealer, okay. I was like going back and forth. These two were head to head. I was like, am I giving it to the Catrice True Skin or am I giving it to a newer formula that I also really love? and it went to the newer one but i still love the catrice true skin but not as much as i have been obsessing over this from flower beauty this is their new get real serum concealer and this formula has kind of shocked me because i didn't like their old concealer the other one that's in the square packaging was actually one of my least favorite concealers ever it just did nothing for my under eyes, whereas this is very smoothing. It's pretty high pigment, so it's not necessarily like thick, but it's also not serum-y thin, you know what I'm saying? Like it, I find very smoothing. A high-end comparison I would give the new Natasha Denona concealer. Like these two are incredibly similar, so if you're looking for not necessarily a dupe, but an alternative that is a very comparable formulation. Like, that's what this is. My favorite powder, it's an oldie, but it's a goodie. This is the e.l.f. Halo Glow. I don't hear much about this one, but this is their loose powder powder. <laughs> what? This is very similar, again, not a dupe, but similar to the Bare Minerals Mineral Veil. So if you enjoy a powder like that, it's very finely milled, almost like soft to the touch, and doesn't look cakey or dry on your skin, this is the one. I do have dry skin, but I love powder and I love a matte finish. This gives you a matte that's not dry or powdery. It's just smooth, which is what I want from a powder. I have mine in the shade light pink. It's definitely not a pink powder, not the way like the Huda pink powder or like the new Jones Road one. It's not as pink as that. It's more so like if you have a pink undertone, which I actually don't, but this powder still looks beautiful. So cheek products. Obviously, I, I, I struggled with this. And I was like, do I do just one blush? Do I do just one bronzer? I couldn't. I'm like, we have to split up cream and powder because they're so different. And it felt unfair to choose a favorite, just one or the other, because they're kind of different. So 
especially right now. I know a lot of people are into creams. I want to give you the option. Now, I actually just posted a best and worst blushes at the drugstore video for last Affordable Friday. I can leave it linked down below if you want to see my thoughts on all of them. I talked about the best ones, the worst ones. We talked cream, liquid powder, swatches, comparisons, like very, very thorough video. But my top favorite powder is a newer one to me, but wow, this is from Catrice. This is the Air Matte Blush. I think I say this wrong every time. It is the Air Blush Matte. Wait, okay, I keep having to look this up because it, the way it's written on here is Air Blush Matte, but then in my head, I'm like, that doesn't seem logical. That's a weird name, but I keep thinking it's the Matte Air Blush. That seems like it should be the name, but the name is the Air Blush Matte because they also have a glowy version, okay? So this is in the shade Peach Heaven. I have been wearing this pretty much nonstop. Today I have on like, I'm unfortunately like five different blushes. So I, I couldn't be like, oh, this is what I'm wearing because I have on so many. It's like, which one is which one is doing what? This is very pigmented too. And not in a way that I find makes it challenging to use or gives you clown cheeks but in a way that requires you to use a like kind of minimal product. You know, it blends out easily, but it's not one that you're going to need to build right away. And my preference typically is a buildable blush, but this one I find has pretty good impact immediately. So if that's your preference, you will really like this. It is smooth. I don't think it looks dry on my cheeks. It blends out well. The color is pretty. I even like the packaging, except one thing is a little weird. I doesn't like fully close all the way like it doesn't have a, a clamp right here or a magnet or anything to keep it closed fully but that's okay liquid favorite has been my liquid favorite for a minute this has not been able to be dethroned this is the makeup revolution super dewy blush now i always say the name is a lie so if you are after a super dewy blush this would not be my choice for you again i'll have the blush video linked this would be my recommendation if you like a matte blush, actually. This is high pigment, long wearing, easy to use, but it is matte. I love this. This color especially is so bright and fun. It is called You Had Me At First Blush. My favorite bronzer at the drugstore that is a powder has also not been dethroned. And I actually kind of was thinking recently, I want to repurchase this one because I haven't had it in a minute, but I have yet to find a powder blush at the drugstore that I have liked more than the Milani. This is such a beautiful powder blush. Or, did I say, was I saying blush before? I hope I've been saying bronzer the whole time. This is so, so, so similar to my number one favorite bronzer, the Fenty Sunstalker. This is such a close comparison, like very, very, very similar product. They are creamy, almost like buttery texture, blend out well. For the cream version, Makeup Revolution again. Their cream bronzer is phenomenal this is called the ultra cream bronzer this one is pretty pigmented but it shears out well while still staying in place because sometimes i find products that are really high pigment that are creams move around like especially if the formula is almost too emollient as i'm trying to blend it out it is just going everywhere and i have little control over it that's not the case with this it still kind of maintains that integrity of where you're placing it but blends out to not be patchy, to not move around my foundation. Like I reach for this over all of my high-end cream bronzers. Like this is just one of the best formulas, according to me. <laughs> like I love this stuff. Highlighter, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't have a, a, a powder favorite right now because I just don't really like powder highlights at the moment. I don't really like powder. I, today's the first day in probably like weeks that I'm wearing a highlight. I'm wearing the Charlotte Tilbury highlighter wand, which will lead me into my favorite liquid, okay? I will say though, if you want a powder one, the Essence one is good. It is very, very bold. So is the Catrice one. Not the, not the Essence baked one. That one's obviously like not bold. That one's beautiful too. But if I had to pick a powder one, I would go with the Essence or the Catrice. But for a liquid, I'm going to give it to Flower Beauty. This was very clearly created to attempt to dupe the Charlotte Tilbury one. And I think it is super duper similar. This formula is easy to blend out. I mean, it's essentially like what I have on my cheeks today. Like it looks the same in my opinion as the Charlotte Tilbury one. You also have that little spongy, here we go. The little spongy applicator, the twist up top. I think this formula is so beautiful. I have mine in the shade Opal. It's a little bit 
pricier than others. If you want a slightly more affordable option that isn't as glowy as this one, I would actually recommend the liquid highlight from Burt's Bees, but I would be very careful because the packaging is a little bit flimsy and mine did break pretty early on. But if you want an option that is half the price of this, I'll have that, the Burt's Bees one also linked. I'm gonna link everything. I always link everything. I do use affiliate links. So if you choose to shop through those links, thank you so much. But as always, obviously no pressure. They're just there for your convenience. But let's talk about eyes. I picked a few eyeshadow products because I was like, how can I just do like a palette? You know, I wanted to give you some more range. So I went with a single shadow, a big palette and a small palette. And the small one's not too tiny. It's not like a quad or a trio, but it's smaller. So for a single eyeshadow, if you want something that looks high end, high impact, flaky, eye catching, you cannot beat these from the Ulta Beauty in-house brand, Ulta Beauty collection. This is called the Lustrous Foil Eyeshadow Formula. This is like the flakiest of the flaky. Now, with any product like this, keep the um, little plastic thing on there so it's not gonna dry up as fast. But this, oh my gosh, apply it with your finger and it will look like such a high-end expensive eyeshadow but it is from Ulta Beauty's brand. And this brand is always on sale, so don't buy a full price, wait until it's on sale. But for a palette, I, I did go with an all matte palette. This has been my favorite though. It felt so unnatural for me to pick any other palette for this one, for the like kind of smaller palette, kind of smaller I'm using loosely because this still has six shades. But I have not stopped using this. If you ever check like the descriptions of my video, I am usually wearing this. In my everyday life, I am pretty much always wearing this from Milani. This is the palette called Whiskey Business. This is their Gilded Mini line. Now, this is the only palette in the line that is fully matte. So I haven't tried the palettes that include shimmers. I will say I have heard bad things about the shimmers. So a little warning there. I can't say based on my own experience, but that is the consensus that I hear. This one though, I reach for all the time. Like I truly would not be shocked if I hit pan in one of these shades eventually. And I believe this was intended to be a dupe for this Charlotte Tilbury palette. It looks almost identical. And if you want just an everyday simple matte palette to do like a subtle look or a more glam look, like this is the one. But if you're like, Kelly, I like a big palette. I want something all in one. I wanna buy one thing and use it for everything on my eyes. This next one, I have shocked myself with this because when this launched, I was roasting and I was like, who needs a palette that big? I have not stopped reaching for this since I first tried it. So this is from ColourPop. This is a little bit older. This is not like anything new. This is old news, but it is the Bare Necessities palette. And when we were in Charleston, we did a look or like a, like a masterclass with someone from ColourPop. And this was the palette that the makeup artist was using. So I was trying it out then. And I have been shocked by how much I have used this palette since then. Almost every single day since I have gotten back from that trip, which was about a month ago at this point, I have reached into this palette for something. Not always my entire look, but something. And the funny part is this is such a gigantic palette and I've used it so much and I still haven't even dipped into every single shade yet. But I have done warm tone looks, cool tone looks. You can do more purpley looks. Like there is so much range in this palette. And if you're like, I just wanna buy one thing and have every possible look covered, I would recommend this. The formula is very good. I've always liked ColourPop eyeshadows. It's, it's hard with this brand because they launch so much. It's hard to know like what's good. What do I buy? What stands out? But for me, this is a beautiful palette. And if you're just going to want to have like one palette that you can do pretty much anything with, this is actually going to be my recommendation. And it shocks me because I was always like, who needs a palette this big? But I, I truly love this. Eyebrows, maybe not the most exciting category, but let's talk about this. This is in like a not super buzzed about product, but it's very good. I'm actually almost out of it. I'm thinking I'm going to be done with this this week and I'm sad. So this is from the lip bar or TLB, they go by that now. And you can purchase this brand at Target or they do have a store in downtown Detroit if you happen to live in Michigan. And this is called the Exact Arch Micro Brow Pencil. Now, let me start off by saying this is a very pigmented eyebrow pencil. So if you prefer something that's much waxier 
and stiff and doesn't deposit too much color, you might not like this. And I felt like I almost had to work through a bit of a learning curve the first time I tried this because it requires you to use such light pressure. Like if you're going in and really pushing it into the skin, you might get too much product. But over time, I have learned to love that. That's what I have in my brows today. I think this is one of the best drugstore brow pencils. That being said, I think there are a lot of really great drugstore brow pencils, but this is my favorite of the moment. I also appreciate this is such a weird small thing, but any brow pencil that has a really narrow spoolie like this, like actually, I should not be showing you this up close. It's looking crusty, but I love a small spoolie. I just think they're so effective at really getting in there without making a mess. This mascara, my mascara pick is not going to be for everyone. So let me start there. But I do have a second option that I wanna share if you are a super bold lash lover. This one, it's not for you if that's your, if that's your preference. This is for my, mm, I like a subtle everyday minimal but still beautiful lash wearer, okay? This is the e.l.f. Lash and Roll. I have mine in the shade brown and this has been my go-to recently for a multi-step lash routine. Now don't get me wrong, it's beautiful on its own. I wear it on its own a ton. If you are wearing just this, expect a lash look that is definitely more understated. You're going to get beautiful separation, a little bit of lift, some lengthening, but minimal volume. This is actually my favorite though for layering. So I like doing a really almost bold, volumizing mascara first and then going through with this over top because the wand is one of the most effective that I have found for combing through clumps. Now, you could also comb through clumps with a lash separator, which I also have and I love using. But I also like that this formulation is what I'm going to describe as semi-tubing, okay? It is not a full-on tubing mascara where you're going to get the full like lash removal situation. That's, that's not what this is. But it's also not a mascara that breaks down in a way where it smudges. Like if you were to take a shower with this on, you're not going to have raccoon eyes. You're gonna have little um, chunks of it coming off. Not in the full tubes, but it doesn't come off while breaking apart like that which is why I like using it as a step two because it locks everything in so I'm not going to get transfer smudging or flaking and it's still easy to remove. So this I love. I think it's a great, <laughs> you see me hit myself with this, but I think it's a great one. But if you're like, well, Kelly, I like a bold lash. That's okay, I have a recommendation for you. It is the best bold lash mascara at the drugstore. It is the Lottie London Super Fake and I am telling you it is so accurately named because your eyelashes are gonna look super fake, but in the best way possible. But if you buy this mascara, make sure you have a lash separator because it can get clumpy and it can get clumpy fast, but it is one of the best buildable mascaras that I have found. Like you get really intense pigment immediately and like lots of volume right away. But if you go in with layer two, layer three, like genuinely you're going to look like you have fake eyelashes on. Like it builds like no other. Whew, okay, lips. The best lip liners at the drugstore, I I probably didn't even need to include in this video because if, if you've even watched one of my videos, you've probably heard me talk about these. So I never shut up about the NYX lip liners. They're like four to five dollars, they're incredible. Today, I originally had on Peekaboo Neutral, but I did put a little bit of this e.l.f. lip liner over top that I've been loving. This is their triangular lip liner in light brown. But I really love the NYX ones because not only is it a really fantastic formula, but they have this in every single shade you could ever imagine. Like, these are great. But with everything else, I'm breaking this down into categories. So, my favorite lip gloss formula, I am doing lip gloss slash lip oil here. We're gonna kind of put them together. I'm gonna give it to this one from Milani. I feel like Milani, Milani and Flower, they were like the big winners today, I feel like. Maybe, mm, no, actually just two for flower. Maybe Milani was, anyways, it doesn't matter. But this has a little bit of a pigment or like a little bit of a tint to it. It smells delicious. It smells like Smacker's lipsticks from like my childhood. You have a very big applicator to this. The funny thing is, most lip glosses and oils that are coming out these days now have really large applicators like this, whereas they didn't used to always. Like I feel like 
doe foots a decade ago were much smaller and the funny thing is i recently tried the lip oil from merit and it has a smaller doe foot and as i pulled it out of the tube i was like shocked like wait this seems super tiny just because everything is so big now this is glossy this is long wearing it's not too sticky i feel like any product like this has to be a little sticky for it to stay but I enjoy the pigment, I enjoy the scent, it looks juicy, plump, it's gorgeous. Okay, yeah, Milani is the big winner actually today because this is Milani also for my recommendation for a lipstick. This is from their Fetish line. This is a comfortable matte is what I'll call it. Okay, the sun just disappeared, but that's okay. This I have in the shade Secret, which is pretty much identical to Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk if you wanted a drugstore dupe for that. This is matte without like settling into your lip lines in a weird way. I don't think it looks or feels dry. It wears for a long time. It has good pigmentation to it. It's great. And for a lip stain, I feel like in the past I haven't included lip stain as a category in these videos, but I'm loving a lip stain right now. I feel like they're super popular. And my favorite at the drugstore is the formula from the Ulta Beauty Collection. This is their Weightless Water Stain. I only wear this on my lips. That being said, it is only described for your lips, but I have heard some people say they like this as a blush. Personally, I don't think this blends out at all on the cheeks, but on the lips, it wears very well. It is not drying on my lips. It is a good, like, sheared out red, red pigment. It's beautiful. I feel like last summer, especially, I was wearing this almost daily let me know your favorites at the drugstore in all these categories are there any others i should try out but thank you so much for watching and i will see you in my next video bye